Welcome back to Aircon Lounge. I'm here at the commercial lot, the basement car park floor, and I'm going to show you first type of ducting is this type of bare duct. So this is either a smoke extraction duct or the fresh air duct. This is part of the smoke extraction system in HVAC. The first you can see is this kind of joint, right? This is we call the TDC joint, right? It's a more secure joint for bigger ducts. Ducts are factory made into L shape like this. And for TDC joint, the factory already bent. And at the side there, the worker needs to knock both L shape together. Then these two flange will be clipped by the TDC clip. So a TDC clip is look like this, right? And we use this small handheld tool to clip on the TDC. This is a T25A TDC according to the SMAGNA standard. Well, when it comes to HVAC duct, we follow the SMAGNA standard. We have two ducting here and the here, these two flange. And before we clip on this TDC clip, we need to put a gasket, basically just a black rubber to seal off any gaps. This kind of uh, ducting system and smoke extraction system usually have two modes. Either a normal ventilation mode and a fire mode. Fire mode, of course, is to activate to extract smokes. Lah. In a smoke extraction duct, usually we have two modes, a normal mode and a fire mode. For normal mode, right, the minimum design capacity is usually 6 air change rate and for fire mode, it's 12 air change rate. So normal mode is an enclosed basement, then we need normal mode. No, Usually we run it in normal mode for basic ventilation, otherwise people will suffocate, right? And in case of a uh, fire, fire alarm will send a signal and the fan will switch to fire mode immediately ramp up the speed for smoke extraction. So when a smoke extraction system works right, we need a makeup air duct and also a smoke extraction duct. Both duct need to be fire rated and need to work at the same time. Airflow will come in here, we'll push the smoke all over to the smoke extraction site. Then this one will extract the smoke. Sometimes this fresh air duct uh, may not be necessary when you have a uh, open area. You know, maybe here you have a big open grill. So we can use the natural ventilation. Fresh air can come in naturally, push out the smoke through the extraction duct. So depending on the specification uh, or the local building code, the ducting thickness, uh, the sheet metal thickness can vary. Uh. This is the standard thickness that we use for HVAC duct. So for fire rated ducts, right, like for example in Malaysia, we allow to use 1.2, 1.2 mm regardless of the duct size to qualify as a 2 hour fire rated. Sometimes for these uh, fire applications, right, people will use uh, they will coat it with a fire rated paint. You know, if the fire rated paint is coated, you will see this is not silver color anymore. It's a, a rough white color. The interval between the joint is about four feet. Right here is a four feet. You can see this line. This line is actually called beading. They call it beading and it's to you know, reinforce the duct to make it stronger so that it won't deflect. And when the duct gets bigger, right, you can see there's a, you know, there's a bolt here. Actually, it's an intermediate tie rod. There's a rod securing the top and bottom of this duct. Uh, so because this one is get very wide already, right? so you need a tie rod to secure it. Otherwise, this, this will sag down. right? So when we talk about ducting, a very famous accessory is this. We call it the angle iron angle iron and this is a hanger rod lah, GI hanger rod. There's two hanger rod, one angle iron. Another type of joint for ducting is called the slip and drive. Here you can see there's no bend out thing for the TDC clip. So they use a slip and the drive to connect it. It will be flat and you see all this uh, like dirty thing is uh, actually sealant. Lah. This usually used for ducting smaller than 800 mm. Compared to TDC joint, right, slip and drive joint actually is much faster in terms of the assembly of the duct. So we want to use slip and drive as much as possible. So for even for a very big duct, right, we can use this technique called the duct reinforcement. So put two angle iron, you no know, sandwich between uh, the center of the duct, and we use a tie rod to screw it together. This angle iron must be reverted to the duct, then it will act as a reinforcement. And this is one of the ways Magna uh, suggests. So we can actually reduce the duct thickness, also no need to use the stronger duct joint but still can achieve the same uh, duct integrity. So if you look at the ducting here, the size, you can see it's very square. If you calculate the total metal surface, right, the squarer the duct, the less the cost of the duct, having the same airflow capacity. 
this duck is huge, right? The width is huge, but then the height is, uh, no, not so much. And uh, there's a rule of thumb we want to design ducting is follow the one to four ratio, right? So if this one is 2,000, uh, this one is 500. Lah. Sometimes, you know, there's not enough space, then no choice. Lah. We have to sacrifice a bit here and there. Uh, the velocity will increase, but it still works. The height, you know, we want to follow at least 2.1 meter bottom of the duct until the floor there, so that the car won't get scratched. When it comes to ducting, that is very important is the wall penetration, right? We want to have a tight seal. Actually, here inside is a fire seal, so that we prevent the fire from spreading from this area to another area. That, that one, we call it compartmentation, right? It's a passive fire protection technique. And this kind of grill, right? Inside, actually, there is a... You know, whether you can see, this is called the damper, right? Opposed blade damper. This one we can adjust and we need to make adjustments so that there's a lot of grill here so that the air will balance right. In front one will not suck more than behind one. Right? So we want everything to be balanced so that if case there's a smoke somewhere here, the whole thing can suck it up. So for this kind of basement duct or even the smoke extraction duct, there's no insulation lah, because we are not dealing with any air conditioning and afraiding of uh, condensation or anything. So if you see this kind of bare duct usually is for ventilation, not for air conditioning, right? So if you see some that is a bit soft and a bit saggy like that, and aluminium in color, those are usually the insulated one with either fiberglass or if you see the surface is gray color, it is a uh, we call it the PE insulation, you know, polyethylene foam insulation. So both also used to insulate, you know, thermally insulate to prevent condensation and energy loss. Final types of duct is the kitchen duct, constructed in GI material and also black steel. Black steel is for those kitchen duct that pass through sensitive area, you don't want the smell to come out. We use black steel because we can weld it. We need to weld it so that the whole thing leak free. Lah. Because even you use TDC or slip joint with all the sealant and the gasket, the smell will still come out. So we need to use black steel and we weld it. The final finishes, we coat it with this anti-corrosion paint. Sometimes it's in a green color to protect it. You see this one? S screwing up the electricals and the banner here. Crazy, huh? Eh?